Hello, I am Linda Sarna, Dean of the UCLA School of Nursing. Before we begin today's pre-recorded ceremony, I want to acknowledge the very painful events of the past two weeks that have highlighted the discrimination, health disparities, and health inequities present in our communities, especially among people of color. Many ask, what can I do? As nurses, as the most admired professionals, you have the opportunity and the responsibility to take action and use your voice to change the system and to reduce these disparities. Be inspired today by the words of Dr. Alicia Georges, our keynote speaker, who will provide guidance about how you and we can make a difference. Now, let the ceremony begin. Welcome to the candidates for Masters of Science in Nursing, Master's Entry Clinical Nurse, Class of 2020. We will start with the Star Spangled Banner performed by Jessica Hange, Acute Care Nurse Practitioner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Hello everyone, I'm Linda Sarna, and I have the honor and privilege to serve as Dean for the UCLA School of Nursing. Welcome to our 2020 commencement ceremonies. Commencement is the highlight of the academic year, honoring and symbolizing academic success and personal achievement for each of you graduating today. It's a collective opportunity for faculty, families, and friends to celebrate this milestone. Some of you will be entering the profession as new nurses. Others will now be recognized as advanced practice nurses. And some of you will become nurse leaders and scientists. All of you are heroes in my book. I know we had all hoped to be together in Royce Hall today, and I share your disappointment that we are not. No one could have predicted that the, we would be in the midst of a pandemic, where we would not be able to gather in a way that allows us to remain at a safe distance from one another. However, we will do our very best to celebrate the accomplishments of your class during 2020, the year designated by the World Health Organization as the year of the nurse and medwife. 
We're living in unmanageable times for society and for nursing education. You should take pride knowing that your accomplishments and your achievements will become stuff of legend. You graduated during the pandemic. The class of 2020 also will have a special place in our heart and you will be commemorated as part of the history of the School of Nursing. You have displayed great courage and have made many sacrifices to continue your education. What our current situation hasn't changed is what you've learned and the pride we feel in seeing what you have overcome to get there. You make us proud. Over the 70 years of the School of Nursing, we have educated thousands of nurses who have addressed and are addressing the health and healthcare needs of the diverse populations of Los Angeles, of California, the nation, and the world. We have strived for academic excellence and led in the advancement of scholarship and research. Our graduates have provided quality care to many, especially those in greatest need. In this day, in this time, society needs you more than ever. COVID-19 has not changed the dream you had when you started to become the best nurse possible, to become the best advanced practice nurse, or to become the best nurse leader or researcher. If anything, I hope that it has solidified your commitment. So wherever you go and whatever path you choose, I know you will make the world a better place. I hope to see many of you again as you pursue your graduate education at the School of Nursing. I am pleased now to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Catherine Alicia Georges, who is the National Volunteer President for AARP, the nation's largest nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated to empowering Americans 50 and older to choose how they live as they age. In this role, Dr. Georges is the principal volunteer spokesman for AARP and a liaison between the board and those AARP serves. In addition to her duties representing AARP, Dr. Georges is a professor and chair of the Department of Nursing at Lehman College of the City University of New York and a volunteer president of the National Black Nurses Foundation. She is a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing. She is actually a living legend of the American Academy of Nursing. She's also a member of the New York Academy of Medicine. She's a lifetime member of the National Black Nurses Association and, and Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. She earned her undergraduate degree from the Seton Hall University College of Nursing, her MA in nursing from New York University, and a doctoral degree in educational leadership and policy studies at the University of Vermont. Welcome, Dr. Georges. Dean Linda Sarna, faculty, staff, family members of the graduates, and most of all, to the class of 2020, good morning. Congratulations to all the graduates on your wonderful accomplishment. I am honored to have been asked to be your speaker in this, the International Year of the Nurse and Midwife, but also a year where we are experiencing a global event never seen before, the COVID-19 pandemic. But I say to you, do not be daunted because we are faced with this disease. You have chosen a profession where you will touch people's lives in such a profoundly positive way because of your excellent preparation. You will be a critical part of a healthcare field undergoing considerable change because of this pandemic and the effects of the economic downturn in our country. I can't tell you exactly how this will shake out in the next 10 years or even in the next year or two, but I think there are some fundamental truths that we can be confident about that will shape your work and the future of healthcare. One is demographic, 
Another is the influence of social determinants of health. And a third fundamental truth is the critical role of nurses, a role that I deeply believe has and will become increasingly important. Let's start with a demographic change. 10,000 people in this country turn 65 every day. By the year 2030, one in five Americans will be 65 years or older. By that time, we might have a million people age 100 or older. Our fastest growing age group in this country are those over 85. People want to age with dignity and purpose. And the overwhelming majority of them want to age at home. As we reflect on longer lifespans, we need to focus intensely on longer health spans, later years in which we are in relatively good health, able to keep working if we want to, and able to enjoy the gift of time. Many older people are having the time of their life. Many more could be. How we have managed the pandemic and its effect and the older populations are lessons learned for the future. We have to recognize and address glaring health disparities, disparities driven by long-standing social dominance that exists across ethnic, racial, socioeconomic, and geographic lines, often in defiance of most promising trends in the population as a whole. The COVID-19 brought this once again to the surface. Social determinants of health, which include areas such as homelessness, poverty, food insecurity, education, and social isolation have once again intersected in this pandemic. Yes, it's vital to eat a healthy diet, exercise, maintain strong social bonds, but how do you take a walk after dinner or visit with a friend if you're scared? How do you feed your family if you live in a food desert? How do you take your prescribed medications if you can't afford them? How do you stay socially engaged if you're stuck at home because your friends have died or the, your family has moved away? We are all experiencing what so many have tried to cope with in the past. It's called social isolation. We're aware of the effects of social isolation, which can be more impactful than cigarette smoking. We've made very meaningful progress in healthcare through the passage of the Affordable Care Act. And it's now almost universally acceptable that people should be covered for pre-existing conditions. Now we need to build on that progress by making sure that social determinants of health are a central part of the debate and discussions about improving healthcare. As skilled listeners and trusted professionals, nurses are adept at addressing critical questions concerning these social determinants. Questions like, are the needs for nutrition and long-term services being met? Is a family patient or family isolated or depressed? Are there family dynamics that have a negative impact on this patient health? Why is the patient missing medical appointments? Is the sky-high cost of prescription drugs forcing the patient to choose between paying for prescription drugs or buying groceries, paying rent, or utilities? You will have a vital role in making sure we acknowledge and address social determinants. You will be critical to meeting the healthcare challenges of uh, all populations as we provide transitional care, help to reduce rehospitalizations, inform and support America's 40 million family caregivers, and provide care coordination, chronic disease management, and preventive care. The central contributions nurses make will only grow as healthcare is increasingly provided in non-traditional settings. As I think about the many key contributions you can make as nurses, I also believe that one of them is resisting the biases that can creep into our healthcare system. In many parts of our country, your zip code becomes the manner in which you are treated, or it's called healthcare disparity by location. Making automatic assumptions about patients is a barrier to providing good healthcare. 
The scope of your contribution will reflect your capacity for recognizing the individuality of every patient and truly listening. Listening, in my view, is the most underappreciated skill, and it is a skill that we refine through practice. Nurses are skilled listeners, and that's one reason nurses are well positioned to be leaders. Think of the many assets nurses bring to a leadership role. Technical knowledge through your studies and your practice. Trust. For over 17 years, the Gallup poll has found nursing to be the most trusted profession. The ability to keep a clear head under pressure, understanding the principles and the value of teamwork, the capacity to provide comprehensible jargon-free explanation and a close-up view and insights into the problems your patients face. As you think today about your new degree and where you're headed next, I'll ask you to consider for a moment where you will be in a few years and the skills and the experience you will have gained and how you can put those assets to work in different arenas. I urge you in your careers to share your perspective, to look for opportunities for leadership, to find a place at the table where policies are set. No seats, bring your own chair. I urge you to use your voice. Nurses are pivotal to building a culture of health in our country, a culture that embraces prevention as well as treatment, a culture that seeks to shed biases, a culture that meets head on the external factors that produce such inequitable outcomes. To truly exercise that pivotal role, you must use your voice. Our communities and our country need to hear the voices of nurse leaders, not only in the hospital room, but in the boardroom, in the committee room, in the legislative chambers where budget and policy decisions are made. We need to hear the voices of nurses and the social determinants of health. Maybe someday you'll even take on an entrepreneurial role, pulling together a business with other nurses. After all, the court ended consolidations and other structural changes that are inevitable during and after this pandemic will create new models in healthcare delivery. That will affect nurses, as well as hospitals and doctors. You can shape what they should be. Being resilient and having a sense of humor about life and yourself are indispensable. Taking on a leadership role can be daunting, but probably easier than the challenges you've already conquered, like taking courses at UCLA. Use your knowledge and use your voice. As we seek to create a culture of health, your patients, your community, and your country need you. When more and more nurses speak up, we will set in motion an unstoppable wave of change. Your influence in private settings and in public policy will reinforce each other. With this degree in hand, you are setting your direction by a moral compass. I wanna leave you with some words from a poem that I use called life. It goes like this. It says, find a passion and pursue it. Fall in love, dream big, spend quality time with family and friends, laugh every day, believe in magic, tell stories, reminisce about the good old days, but look with optimism to the future. When possible, travel often, learn more, be creative, never give up, do what you love, but be true to who you are. Make time to enjoy the simple things in life. Forgive even when it's hard. Smile often, but be grateful. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Try new things. Work hard. Don't count the minutes. Count the laughs. Remember to embrace change. Trust in yourself. Be thankful. Be nice to everyone. Be happy. Live for today, and above all, make every moment count. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. Georges, for that inspiring keynote. Graduates of our Master's Entry Clinical Nurse, or MECAN program, 
come to nursing after completing a bachelor's degree in another discipline and bring diversity and life experience to their developing nursing practice. In addition to a master's degree and RN licensure, our Meccan graduates are eligible to become a clinical nurse leader for additional certification, reflecting their unique understanding of policy and system issues that have an impact on patient outcomes, particularly in today's healthcare environment. The Meccans have chosen two speakers, Stephanie Busby, followed by Devin Black. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephanie Busby, and I am so proud to say that I am part of UCLA's graduating Meccan class of 2020. Even though we're graduating via a screen, I hope that we each can really bask in this very real triumphant moment in our lives. I think it would be impossible to let the recent events go unmentioned, but what I really want to focus on is us and our long journey to get here. We have all sacrificed so much, many of us overcoming immense adversity just to make it to this incredible day. On day one, we were just 70 strangers, give or take, from across the US, some from different parts of the world, spanning from 22 to 48 years old with varying undergraduate degrees. It quickly became clear that we'd be forced to adjust to a different way of life one that required complete devotion to learning both the science and art of nursing. For a lot of us, that meant less time with our loved ones, with the people and things that bring us joy, but through all the growing pains, we got acclimated. Our hyper-competitive nature soon fell astray, and it became clear that our own personal success wasn't threatened by the success of our peers, but rather elevated by it that much more. We learned to shamelessly give a woo in unison if a classmate did something awesome, or even if they didn't, honestly. Even though we spent every class in that same windowless auditorium, seeing each other made it that much more tolerable, even enjoyable. And then, within the blink of an eye, that newfound sense of normalcy was pulled out from right under us. A sense of normalcy a lot of us, myself included, took for granted. What I would give to have one more 10-hour school day in that windowless auditorium with all of you. And now, we will always remember that we graduated from nursing school the year COVID-19 took the world by storm. But while in the middle of a pandemic, our mission and role lie ahead ever more clearly as we join the ranks of the number one trusted professionals in the world. May we honor those who have paved the way for us. When it might feel crushing or unbearable, may we remind ourselves why we got into this mess in the first place. No matter what specialty, may we go forth and be the kind of nurses that we always dreamt of being, excellent ones. We wouldn't be graduating today without immense support. So thank you to the now retired Rhonda Flanoy Younger, Mark Coven, and Jamie Gama for picking every single one of us. Thank you, Craig Kusunoki, for helping us figure out how we could afford to learn here. Thank you to Janet Kang, Belinda Huntley, Laura Robles, and Shelley Shepard for keeping us informed and on track at all times. Thank you to our professors for imparting your invaluable wisdom to us both inside and outside of the classroom. And a big thank you to our loved ones who put up with us during this program. And to my graduating class, it was an absolute privilege being one of your class clowns. I, it is an honor to serve others alongside you. I leave you all with the three words that our award-winning professor, Barbara Demon instilled in us throughout our journey in hopes of once again, reminding ourselves to be present and full of gratitude and celebration. Yay, we're alive. Thank you. Good morning, afternoon, or evening to each of you tuning in from various areas across the globe as we stay home and stay safe during this pandemic on our graduation day. My name is Devin, 
and I am a proud member of the Meccan 2020 cohort, here to reminisce with you on a very long, short two years here at the School of Nursing. I originally debated highlighting how we overcame claustrophobia in the dungeon, which we so lovingly nicknamed our lecture hall, multiple floors underground, or that when winter came in 2019, we made Jon Snow proud by taking on more group projects than White Walkers. Then 2020 came, the year of the nurse, and it has been a year, even in six months. Throughout these two years though, even now, we have realized that there are only two certainties, a beginning and an end. Neil Donald Walsh once said that life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Most of the ends of our comfort zone began the first day of clinical when we had to go knock on the door and say the famed words, hi, my name is, and I'll be your student nurse today, to our very first patient. Some knocks were more confident than others, but we all started there, pushing ourselves into the room. And before we knew it, we were in preceptorship with multiple patients, not even thinking about knocking on the door, but instead trying to figure out how to politely excuse ourselves so that we could go chart. Because if it wasn't charted, it didn't happen. With each quarter, we became more aware of how quickly life could change. It was in this time of many confused feelings that we were reminded to celebrate the small moments as much as the big ones through a little daily mantra a loved professor taught us. Yay, we're alive. It can be said quietly as you're half asleep or screamed as you emerge from your very last OSCE. Or more recently, after making it through another marathon of Zoom meetings. And through these two years, this perfectly imperfect Meccan family took the time to celebrate the small moments and the big, the birthdays, the perfect coffee, submitting comp papers, the end of finals week, engagements, and of course, our multiple Meccan babies. In these two years, we have also paused to mourn the loss of loved ones, innocents, patients, and idols. In the future, may we get our in-person graduation when it is safe to do so. Until then, let's celebrate in front of our computer screens because for better or worse, virtually or in person, Meccan graduating class of 2020, we did it together. This year, we could not hold the blue and gold ceremony for our master's entry graduates. At the blue and gold ceremony, family and friends bestow upon the student their nursing pin. The pinner is selected by the student and is usually someone who has been a great source of support and encouragement to the student on their nursing journey. During the presentation of the master's candidates, you will see we have recognized these extraordinary people. Their names are shown with the graduate's photo. We will also recognize the remarkable students who were selected by their classmates for the Blue and Golden Awards. These students have embodied the School of Nursing ideals of empathy, leadership, and teamwork. And we have a surprise for you. In addition to receiving a UCLA pin, you will also receive a certificate from the Barco's Nightingale Foundation for a complimentary set of scrubs. Barco also has a rich history in providing uniforms to the nursing profession, and we were, are very grateful to them for thinking of our graduates today. Hi, I'm Dr. Barbara Bates Jensen. It's my pleasure to present the 2020 candidates for the master's entry clinical nursing degree. I will state each candidate's name, any honors or awards received, and we recognize the persons who would have pinned them at the blue and gold award and pinning ceremony on their picture. Lisa M. Acuna, Sigma Theta Tau. Patricia Claire Agabau, Sigma Theta Ta. Anne 
Andrea Patricia Aguila, Sigma Theta Ta, Alpha Ta Delta, and the Student Award for Leadership. Anahit Arapedian. Leslie Maria Asboro Puglis, Sigma Theta Ta. Tochuku Andrew Arkpati, Sigma Theta Ta. Mania S. Alexandrian. Sarah Allison, Sigma Theta Ta. Franika Alexandra Allen, Sigma Theta Ta. Jocelyn Almora. Fajr Al Najjar. Kaylee Amber, Sigma Theta Ta. Yuanzi Gary Bai, Sigma Theta Ta. Nicole Ann Ballanton, Sigma Theta Ta, Alpha Ta Delta, and the Student Award for Team Player. Kayla Ann Beland, Sigma Theta Ta. Devin Marie Black, Sigma Theta Ta. Ned Andrew Brower, Sigma Theta Ta. Stephanie Busby, Sigma Theta Ta. Estefani Chacon, Sigma Theta Ta. Flor Chavaria, Sigma Theta Ta. Jessica Caroline Chavez. Luis Chavez, Sigma Theta Ta. Sierra Collins, Sigma Theta Ta. Stephanie Liveria Cortez. Matthew Paul Dow, Sigma Theta Ta. Jacqueline Duran. A. Natalie Esparza, Sigma Theta Ta. Spencer Fair, Sigma Theta Ta. Alexis Faria, Student Award for Team Player. James Joseph Ferrales. Rosalia Dominique Flores. Martin Gillette, Sigma Theta Ta. Lisa 
Big Lin Hong, Sigma Theta Ta. Willie Larson, Sigma Theta Ta. Denise Lefeuve, Sigma Theta Ta. Jisoo Helena Lee, Sigma Theta Ta. Connie Lynn, Sigma Theta Ta. Kimberly Ann Mark, Sigma Theta Ta. Bryant Melvin Mata, Sigma Theta Ta. Ram Mandawi. Victoria Beatrice Moons. Celez Elizabeth Mora, Sigma Theta Ta. Angela Sunwu Nam, Sigma Theta Ta, Alpha Ta Delta. Lawrence Tan Nguyen, Sigma Theta Ta. Natasha Osipovich. Sydney Parham, Sigma Theta Ta. Tanya Perez, Alpha Ta Delta. Desiree Perry. Melissa Rodriguez. Susanna Rodriguez, Sigma Theta Ta, Alpha Ta Delta. Amanda Mia Romano, Sigma Theta Ta. Gabriela Sanchez, Sigma Theta Ta. Gabriela Sanchez Moraz, Sigma Theta Ta. Jalen Shiloh, Sigma Theta Ta. Stephanie Shimada, Sigma Theta Ta. Ellie Jan Ta, Sigma Theta Ta, and Student Award for Empathy. James Tran, Sigma Theta Ta. Michelle Elizabeth Tran, Sigma Theta Ta. Min Trong, Sigma Theta Ta. Lily Yuan, Sigma Theta Ta. Will the candidates please rise? By the powers vested in me by the Regents of the University of California, I bestow upon you the Master of Science in Nursing degree and all the rights and privileges thereof. Congratulations, graduates.
In full knowledge of the obligations I am undertaking, I promise to care for the sick with all the skill and understanding I possess. Without regard to race, creed, color, politics, or social status, sparing no effort to conserve life, to alleviate suffering, and to promote health. I will respect at all times the dignity and religious beliefs of the patients under my care, holding in confidence all personal information entrusted to me and refrain from any action which might endanger life or health. I will endeavor to keep my professional knowledge and skill at the highest level and to give loyal support and cooperation to all members of the health team. I will do my utmost to honor the International Code of Ethics applied to nursing and to uphold the integrity of the professional nurse. I want to take a moment to say thank you to the faculty and staff who worked so hard to produce this, our very first virtual commencement. Doctors Barbara Bates Jensen and Nancy Jo Bush read the student names, Shelley Shepard, Janet Kang, Stephanie Dominic, and Sue Kwong, uh, provided support from Student Affairs, uh, Affairs, and Laura Perry did a stellar job from communications. Thank you. But now I want to recognize all of you who have helped these graduates achieve their goals. Thank you to the spouses and significant others. Thank you to the parents and the grandparents. Thank you to the children and thank you to the other relatives and friends watching today. Thank you all. Thank you so much for joining us today and best wishes to the new degree holders.